Hi everybody, I thought I'd put together uh, potentially my last video ever. There might be a part two to this because uh, there is so much happening so very quickly, but I uh, see a lot of pieces of the puzzle being put together and I thought I'd try and piece them together. And I think I see at least uh, a good portion of what might be the timing of the rapture and upcoming events. And um, so this is going to be a very rough presentation uh, because it's not practiced or anything. And I just put together my thoughts, my thinking out loud onto uh, so-called paper. And I wanted to bring this to you uh, as quickly as possible. So from that, I'll go from here. So this presentation is a compilation of these following uh, YouTubers, but it's not limited to by any means. I watch a lot of YouTube channels, as I'm sure many of you do, but this is in particular associated with End Time Watchmen, Steve Fletcher 222, Supernatural by Design, Ricardo Garcia, Truth Love Light, Nick Vanderlane, and Rapture Saint. So regardless of how you feel about these individuals, um, I'm not going to even debate that in the comments. So, But this is what I see from their channels. And again, it's not limited to that. And of course, Aaron at God a Minute has a lot going on. So since he's presenting so much, I'm just going to use these fellow watchmen and women uh, information from their channels right here, along with uh, a shout out to Repo Man 64 and his model of putting motto of putting together pieces of the puzzle, which is what I'm trying to do. So here are the people I'm giving kudos to for this slide. So last night, so last night, End Time Watchmen had put together these two picks from uh, Back to the Future, which had the Twin Pines Mall at a time frame of 1.16 a.m. But he mentioned that if you flip it, it's 9. Uh, I'm trying not to get flagged here. So September 9 to the you know what. And then it also alludes to the Enoch calendar indirectly with the 166. I have that information over here. That's actually the diameter of the Enoch calendar or circumference. So I'm not going to go through that. But it has, an, uh, it alludes to with this event here to the Twin Towers. And then also with the twin, Steve Fletcher had uh, showed some information about Neo in the Matrix with his name being Thomas, of course, that being Didymus and the twin, and I'll show that briefly. And then later on, uh, it shows Lone Pine Mall after he comes back with a time of 1.33 a.m., which backwards is 331. Uh, I believe that End Time Watchmen also had another clip from uh, L. I forget the name of the series. And then there's, if you use the 331 or 113 and just uh, break it up, it's 313. And there's the 313 menorah that's going to occur on March 13th. And that's information uh, in Stellarium that Truth Love Light had put together. And I'll show that as well. So I'm just doing this quickly just to get this out as soon as possible. So in Steve Fletcher's last couple of videos, he was talking about uh, Neo and it shows on in both his records and on his ID 
that he was born March 11th, and his name is, uh, of course, uh, they, they call him Mr. Anderson, but his name is Thomas, and Steve had talked about Thomas being Didymus the twin, and again, that alludes to the Twin Towers and that event that occurred back in uh, 2001. And with Neo's birth date, it has the 311. And with the 311 date, that was the date of the onset of CV-19. And it is also the beginning of Ramadan's fasting. Ramadan actually begins on March 10th at sundown, but they begin their fasting the next day on March 11th. So there's the uh, 311. So there is a possible event that could occur that's related to the twin and the CV-19 and Ramadan fasting. So last night, Jared at Supernatural by Design also put out his Purim 2024. Uh, he sounded rather uh, a little bit urgent in his voice, but he presented the information on Purim. You can go see this. He put this out last night. He had that Ramadan starts at uh, March 10th. But their fasting actually starts uh, March 11th. But he did go through Purim plus one day, which is March 11th. And the anniversary is now the fourth anniversary of CV-19. And then two weeks later is Purim, the same day that the penumbral uh, lunar eclipse occurs on March 25th. And then two weeks after that, is the new moon on April 8th, 2024, which is the date that the uh, total solar eclipse traverses across the United States, forming the X over Little Egypt. And Aaron at God a Minute has tons of information on this. So please watch Supernatural by Design. Also, uh, Aaron at God a Minute and Ricardo Garcia's recent videos because they have information on the upcoming eclipse. Ricardo and uh, Jarrett have excellent information on the uh, Purim and then Truth Love Light, she has information on the 313 upcoming menorah on March 13th. So Truth Love Life had put together on March 13th at the midnight hour uh, from Nagasaki, uh, Japan. She has this lineup, the Planetary Alignment, which is a 313 menorah, three planets to the left of the sun, three planets to the right of the sun, with the sun in the middle representing, I believe, Jesus Christ, in my opinion. So this is being the lineup that's going to occur again on March 13th. So uh, in a couple of uh, days or in about a week. And uh, associated with that number is, again, the 313 or 313, March 13th, which is the backwards thing that was shown on the Lone Pine Mall. Backwards is the 331. And that all alludes to the menorah date here, the CV 19th, fourth anniversary, and the 390, uh, 331. And uh, this, so March, so March 31st as well as March 13th. So March 13th, as well as March 31st, and this was taken from Nagasaki, Japan, and that's where the plutonium, uh, I won't say on that not to get flagged either, event that occurred that ended World War II uh, with Japan. So the first one was over Hiroshima, which was, a uh, uranium uh, 
I won't say, but the one over Nagasaki was plutonium. So referring back to Patrick at End Time Watchmen's two picks here, this is the scene when Marty McFly goes to the past, Twin Pine Malls at Flipped being 9-11, and then the Twin Towers, and then Thomas also meaning the twin, Thomas Didymus, and then the time being in reverse, uh, 3 3 one, and now it's Lone Pine Mall. This is when Marty comes back uh, to try and save Doc, and then that's the 3 3 one is the play on 3 one three. So this is also March 13th on the menorah lineup from Nagasaki, Japan. But specifically related to the scene at Twin Pine and later Lone Pine Mall with the DeLorean. Uh, when he went back to the past, the DeLorean had to use the plutonium in order for the DeLorean to go back to the past. And again, plutonium was used uh, with Nagasaki, where, as uranium was used with Hiroshima. And then that scene was also, uh, because he had stolen the plutonium, was also re, uh, related to, um, of course, the, I'll say the evil guys that start with the letter T, wrist, <laughs> t wrist uh, that were trying to get back their plutonium. So I'm not a fan of using predictive programming and stuff like that uh, for my uh, videos, but sometimes it's good to be as wise as a serpent, but as gentle as a dove, as the Bible says. So here is the real scene of that same date uh, in 2001 of the of that September event of course they were reading the pet goat here's uh, President Bush Jr. with the book upside down I don't know if that was some sign or he wasn't paying attention thus in the I pet goat they have them with the dunce cap but they also have I pet goat 2 which is the sequel to the event that occurred on this date when the children were reading the pet goat. So the premise of I Pet Goat 2, the sequel uh, to this, is that there would be another event uh, in the future and that whole video was related to stuff that would transpire or uh, at least from the nefarious people uh, that will transpire the way they want it uh, in the future. So that might be upcoming here very soon. So going back to Jared's Purim information. So Ramadan is starting March 10th, but the next day is their fasting starting on March 11th, of which I showed all that information with the 311 and the 331 that Patrick presented as well. Then two weeks later is Purim and also the penumbral lunar eclipse. And then two weeks after that is the new moon, which is the date of the total solar eclipse that crosses the United States forming the X or the cross or the Tav. So... We also have in the midst of Ramadan, the Shabbat of the Red Heifers, which, in, uh, which will be on. And the Shabbat of the Red Heifers is specifically on March 29th sundown through March 30th nightfall. So I believe... This is the time period since Ramadan is already going on and they have already bought two plots of land in the Mount of Olives uh, in the past that this is when the red heifer or heifers will be sacrificed and burned on the Mount of Olives during this Ramadan when it's most quiet 
and they're doing their one month fasting. So that makes sense for that to occur during that time frame. And here it's called Shabbat Parah, and it's the Shabbat of the red heifers and begins at sundown again on March 29th and ends nightfall on Saturday, March 30th. So I uh, only one or two of the five red heifers have been disqualified. So that leaves two to three that are qualified still. And it only makes practical sense that they will do it on this March uh, 29th and 30th during Ramadan uh, when they have the less resistance from, from Muslims. So if you go to the Temple Institute uh, organization site, you see for the red heifer preparation, um, and I won't read all of this, but basically they do not do this on Passover. It is only required to, uh, to have the blood sacrifice and to burn the red heifer for purification purposes. They only need the hyssop and the blood to sprinkle everybody who has, uh, let me see where that, where that is. So all the people who are involved with the heifer and its preparation from beginning to end become impaired from contact with it, with the heifer. The same applies to their garments. They're required to immerse themselves and wash their clothing in order to be reinstated. So once they do this, but once they get sprinkled with the blood, the hyssop dipped in the blood, but this is done on that red heifer Shabbat day, then they burn the, uh, the heifer and then the ashes are used later on for safekeeping uh, in the holy temple and it doesn't have to be the actual temple. It can be uh, a tent just like what uh, Moses had in the wilderness. So anyways, let me mention briefly too uh, that this Burning is done on the Mount of Appointment, which they have chosen to be the Mount of Olives. So I would go read this page to get a better understanding. I'm just covering this briefly. So they don't need the blood of the heifer and the ashes on Passover, but rather for only purification. And then that's they burn the heifer, they sprinkle the people who are associated with the preparation of it because they're unclean, and then they burn the heifer, keep the ashes for later purposes, and I believe that's what will be used in a makeshift tent like Moses for Passover. So Passover for the Jews in Israel this year, 2024, will fall will start between sundown monday april 22nd and ends at nightfall on monday april 29th 2024 so i'm assuming that these are the dates that they will actually uh, sprinkle the ashes uh, in the makeshift temple uh, on passover and that could therefore be the abomination of desolation uh, that occurs. So Eric at uh, Rapture Saint actually explains this pretty well in a couple of videos. He just did one today earlier, but the one he did about a week and a half ago, he really goes into detail with explaining it. So they only need the ashes for purification which will be done at the end of this month. And then for Passover, they need the ashes uh, for the temple itself. So, and that could be the abomination of desolation. And I believe the rapture occurs before this time. 
So there is in all likelihood any, uh, a, a red flag event that actually occurs on March 13th or March 31st. And with that, uh, Purim being on March 25th, uh, projected that date uh, based on the uh, information that both Ricardo Garcia and Supernatural by Design have presented uh, that there could be a possibility, high possibility of a, a Purim rapture, uh, which would be on March 25th prior to the Red Heifer Shabbat uh, a few days later, or and on either of March 13th or March 31st uh, with plutonium and a Nagasaki uh, type of event, which they seem to be alluding to, that could be the event that the abomination that makes desolate. Now, where I don't know where that would be, that's just my... Uh, uh, what I'm guessing, or, or at Passover, uh, which falls between April 22nd and April 29th on the Jewish calendar. And the only reason I'm stating that particular one is because that's when they're going to uh, sprinkle, I believe, a makeshift Moses type of in the wilderness type of temple, uh, the ashes uh, in the Holy of Holies. And uh, and that might be instead of the abomination that makes desolate, but the abomination of desolation. So there's a distinction between the two. Uh, so please watch Rapture Saints videos. I'll try to put links to all of this information so the sequence of events as i see coming up will be the red heifer or heifer sacrifice and burn during ramadan because that's the most practical time to do it uh so on red heifer shabbat which is nightfall or sundown from the 29th of march through march 30th and this is after purim and then Ramadan again falls between March 10th or rather March 11th with the beginning of their fasting through April 11th. So it only makes sense that they do it during that time um, because the Muslims are fasting and, um, and so on and so forth. Then the red heifer blood sprinkling is only required for purification purposes for the priests and the people who were associated with the preparation of the red heifers and for cleansing of their uh, uh, clothing. And they said that they are going to do this on the Mount of Olives. They bought two plots of land there and uh, one is public and one is hidden. And so I think they're going to go to the hidden site. And then the ashes are saved for later usage. And this red heifer sacrifice does not occur on Passover, but rather on the end of March on red heifer Shabbat. Then, um, so here's the link again for the Temple Institute information for the, uh, the red heifer. So you can see the whole process of the ceremony there. And then with the 311 date with Thomas the Didymus alluding to the twin or the twin towers, that being the fourth anniversary of the CV-19 and the beginning of fasting that Steve Fletcher 222 is presenting along with End Time Watchmen and Truth Love Light information with the uh, scene from back to the future this being the past looking like nine 
flip upside down with the twin towers again being thomas the twin and then him coming back to try and save doc with the lone pine tower being the time 331 backwards or march 31st and then the 313 play on the numbers but also with the 313 menorah occurring on march 13th so i think between this 311 and the 313 date from the uh, march 13th menorah and then the 3 3 march 31st date i think those are all three high watch dates for some event to occur and since these scenes are associated with the nine event and also with plutonium i think it's going to be some type of event associated with those three dates and plutonium and i'm being cryptic here with purim happening two weeks after the 311 date on march 25th the penumbral date and then there's also the two weeks after that, which is the April 8th uh, total solar eclipse, making an X across the United States uh, over Little Egypt. Egypt was also a representation of the Exodus. So there's that possibility as well. And that occurs a couple of weeks before Passover. So that's the other possible date so i think there is a lot coming up and a lot of very high critical watch dates during this time so finally will the rapture occur before the abomination that causes desolation due to either this event or this event or both shown here both red events but anyways i don't know but i think there is a a very strong possibility for that to happen one being at purim the other one being at passover so uh as aaron says it's time to get tight with christ i completely 100 percent agree and so this is not the time to mess around so please get saved please come to the lord because the time is actually not short but the time is actually now so please do that and uh, please um, like and share this video for the algorithm share it to as many people as possible now, do I know if these events are going to occur or not? I don't know that with 100% assurity. Neither do I know the timing of the rapture with 100% assurity. But there sure is a lot coming up. And then based on what's being shown uh, via predictive programming, uh, which I don't like to use a lot, uh, but back this i just didn't have the time to do this due to the brevity and the the shortness of time so i wanted to get this out as soon as possible but anyways i hope this video has been a blessing to you and please take high notice to march 11th march 13th and march 31st and if we're here to see the total solar eclipse in april on april 8th please watch that date as well with the new madrid seismic zone with this upcoming total solar eclipse and soon after passover but i think Purim and passover are the two high possibilities i'm leaning towards Purim, but if that passes then i'm going to passover so either way um just an additional month to me but anyways i hope that again this has been a blessing so please share this information if you care to so i will talk to you soon or see you 
in the sky. Take care.